to use and everybody can reach that program and every day I, I, I'm sure that it will be very popular very soon Only I, I need I need uh, four minutes more for my presentation because I have I prepared the science fiction meeting It's better? Can you hear me? Huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, I divide it in two parts. Uh, coverage value, I want to explain what it is. Maybe it's becoming more complicated, and I, won't, I will try to make it very simple and can understandable by everybody. And in the second part, uh, I, I, I want to show you a new system, a new robot uh, for uh, calculating the donor areas. I want to start with coverage value part. What's my donor capacity? How many graphs do I need for a good coverage? These are the most frequent questions our patients are asking us every day. And you realize every patient, every doctor is giving a different answer. 3,000, 5,000 donor capacities. According to their own capacities, they're answering uh, different numbers. So patients are shocked. They don't know what they need because we don't have an objective criteria for coverage and donor capacity. And when we don't have a scientific objective criteria, what happens? The competition in the field, high graph numbers, and we started to see over depleted donor areas. And you can see that these are these disaster results. So we have uh, to prevent this type, we need a criteria. To, to find a criteria, we have to know about coverage. You can see two photos uh, from the garden. At the left side, you can see the ground. At the right side, it's better coverage. Two criteria are the number of the grasses and the thickness of the grasses. These are the two criteria, the, the diameter, the thickness, the caliber, and the number of the uh, grasses. So the same for the hair. If you want to find the area, we are multiplying two sides. So we can find the area. Area is the coverage. So when we multiply with the number of the hair, with the thickness of the hair, we are finding the coverage. James Harris in 2003, he also mentioned that the visual density is related to shaft diameter and the number of the hairs. So in my daily practice, these are the equipments that I'm using. It's a caliber meter. I, I'm using three different caliber meters. So I have a, I'm choosing one hair, two hair from different areas and I'm finding the caliber of the hair. But the problem with that, all these mechanical systems are giving different numbers. And Dermolite, I'm taking the photo of the patient from different areas. Before the surgery and after one year taking the photo and on the uh, hair counter, I'm counting the number of the hairs and trying to find the coverage value of different areas. And this is a graph calculator. This application I'm using uh, in surgeries. So during my extraction, I have to control my hair per graph average because it should be in a sequence with the coverage value system. So I need also uh, this graph calculator taking the photos, hair counter, finding the number of the hairs. I, I know the caliber before cutting his hair, I know the calibers and multiplying them and finding the coverage value. Number of the hairs, the thickness of the hair and the coverage value. 5.4, why 5.4? We discussed it was many times. When you place 45 grass with the average of 2.2 hair and which is 55 micron, these are the averages of European patients, you are getting this coverage. This coverage is acceptable. Minimum coverage, but if you if I, if I make the hair wet, you can see the skin. This is the minimum acceptable coverage, so we can accept 5.4 as a, a criteria. So I started to use in my patients uh, before the surgery when they come to me. I am taking the points and taking the photos. I know the calibers: 120 or 70 micron. When I multiply 8.4 before the surgery. And when he came for the second surgery after one year, you can see the extracted white dice, dots, and you see the coverage value is seven, from 8.4 8 to seven. So I know how many graphs I should extract from that area not to create over depletion. So in my daily practice, I started to use it. So I want to show you my calculation system. Uh, I choose two patients, A patient and B patient. They look similar. If you show any doctor, uh, if you ask their donor capacities, probably they will give you similar numbers. But when we calculate with the numbers, you will see a big difference. They are totally different from each other. And another point we don't have to uh, forget, 
donor area is not safe. We are also losing donor capacities every year. 5% in 10 years, we discussed yesterday about the debate. So I estimated we are using, according to my, this, these numbers, semi-scientific, because these are my observations. Uh, maybe we will get uh, real numbers in one year's time by using the robotic system. We are losing 15% of the temporal and 10% and 10% oxy occipital and parietal areas. And oh, we also add our calculations these possible loss in the future, not to create over depleted areas. For example, his left temporal area, which is 35 centimeters square, I started with the left side patient, A patient. The coverage value is 7.8 on his left temp uh, temporal area. How I find that? I know the caliber, 52 micron. I know the density, 7 to T follicular unit per square centimeter. And I know the number of hair per follicular unit calculated density, which is 2.06. So when I multiply these numbers, I'm finding 7.8. If he may lose in the future 15 percentage, then I can accept it as 6.63. And if my limit is 5.4, then I can change his coverage value maximum 1.23. Uh, so if during the surgery, now uh, we need a graph calculator. Uh, so during the surgery, I'm checking my hair per graph averages. And I estimated, or during the surgery, if my hair per graft average is 2.06, the caliber is the same. So by using the same formula, I can find how many grafts I can extract from that patient, which is 11.2 from each centimeter square. And if the area is 35 centimeter square, when I multiply it, I can extract from his left uh, uh, temporal area 392 grafts with the average of 2.06 hair per graft without depleting his donor area and including his future hair loss. So, if I completed the system in different areas, as a donor capacity, I find 5,812 for this patient, which is 30% of total follicular units. But the right side patient, even they look similar, it's a totally a different case. His coverage value is 14.6 at his parietal temporal area, at the left temporal area. And if I repeat the same formula, everything will be different. You see here, his total donor capacity is 12,885. Nearly two times, and which is 56 uh, percentage of his total follicular unit. We can use the same system, coverage value system in the recipient area. Now you see 80 here, 80 here, uh, 100 here, and 120 here per square centimeter in the recipient area with 50 micron. I will only change the micron of the hair to see how caliber is affecting the coverage. I will make it 60 and 70 with the same number of the hair, 60, 50, 60, 70. The coverage is changing. So this is the second criteria, the caliber. I'm using this system for three years from 53 countries. Uh, I, one by one, we take the photos the calibers of the hair, and we are trying to get an average for worldwide, and we got these numbers, 8.1, 9.6 for the parietal and occipital 12.96. And uh, highest Indian patients, you can see the uh, averages of Indian patients, lowest Scandinavian patients from that uh, 53 countries. This is why this is important. If you want to start 5.4 for the temporal area, and if you want to find a limit for parietal and occipital areas, we can use these ranges. Uh, also, for any country, we can choose another range. And according to my evaluations, you can see, if I use a coverage value system, according to the coverage value, we can find how many of the hair, ratio of the hair can be extracted from that area. And if the coverage value is like, uh, 20, you can reach to 70 percentage of hair can be extracted in, in the limit of not over harvesting. But coverage value is not enough because we have problems. Another case, he came to me in 2015, 4,500 grams with the average of 2.02. It was 14.4 in his first surgery. In 2006, the second time, 4,000 more, 12.1. And he came this year again, 1,200 more. Uh, before the surgery, it was 10.2. But th there's a problem with that system. The first problem, even you choose points, it's not possible to get the same point, take a photo, you are missing one millimeter, changing everything. 
and the average of the hair is different in different areas. This hair, I use different type of caliber meters. The same hair with all of them, I'm getting a different number. Because of the pressure, elasticity of the hair, everything is different. So I realized this mechanical system are giving you an idea, but not exactly the right thing. And another thing, coverage value is not enough. We have to improve it. Because we, are, we have also another factor, the angulation of the hair. We need a constant number. And also the main thing, we have to create uh, an, an, a number with the contrast, hair contrast between the skin and the hair color contrast. So with the, every different type of hair, because in my daily, I look at seven, another patient seven, but they, they look different. So coverage value is not enough. At least we started a criteria and together, all hair surgeons, we have to improve it according to our daily practices, observations. So, and at least we have a scientific criteria. To improve it, I know the, the best result is by visually uh, calculate the caliber of the hair. So that's the reason we created a, a scanning system uh, with Professor Osan together, and uh, a science fiction movie is starting. can see keyboard here. Uh, the first step is uh, 3D modeling of the head because uh, taking very high definition photos, uh, the software needs these photos, so it should be taken from the same distance. The first step is 3D modeling of the head and after that it started to scan the donor area, the caliber of each hair, the caliber of each hair and then the, uh, the the area of the parietal occipital temporal size, counting the follicular numbers and calculated numbers before the surgery. And after finishing the donor area before the surgery, scanning the recipient area also. This is a high motion movie because now it takes nearly 20 minutes. If I want to show all the parts, it will take 20 minutes. I don't have this time. Now scanning the recipient area, finding also calculating the coverage value of the uh, recipient area, so how many grafts do I need to make a good coverage on that side? And after the surgery, <clears throat> I like this part very much because you know the ethical. When, when your patient come to me, they never know that their previous surgery, how many grafts transplant. They never say, 
doctor transplant me 3,000 grafts. They always say, they said 3,000 grafts. Because they really don't know. They, can, they don't have any chance to count them. It's scanning the donor area, counting the number of the extraction holes. So after finishing, the, also calculating the donor coverage value after the surgery, and also partial transaction rate, because we don't know real partial transaction rate and total transaction rate. We know total transaction rate easy, but if you compare the holes and if you count the number of the graphs, you can find the total, uh, total transaction rate, but the, by the help of this system, you have a chance to see the first. We, we are working for, uh, on it for a long time, and we need more time. I was planning to bring it here, but we have some custom problems, and probably in uh, eight uh, months or six months, it will be ready totally, because the, the software system is also learning itself. We have to improve it. Uh, every day now we are scanning five patients to, uh, with Dr. Uh, Professor Ohusan together, and he's my hero. I want him to present uh, five minutes. He will, for technical parts of this, you can ask your question, and he will make a presentation uh, from the most known university expertise in, in image processing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Koray, for introducing me. Um, I'm an engineer in electronic engineers, and I have expertise in image processing. I mostly design systems for um, companies and doctors for their uh, imaging-based problems. So uh, when we meet Koray, he described his idea of calculating coverage value for all the hats, and we discussed the limitations of the current approach. Well, uh, the current approach actually uses manual labeling. You have to capture images and manually count each follicle. And it's a time-consuming process. And you have to use a caliber to measure thickness of the hair, which is again an error-prone pro error process because you, apply, you have to apply some pressure to the hair. And it, since it's elasticity, you will have some errors. And Again, because of these time-consuming manual operations, you can only take samples from each area. So this is another limitation. So when we discussed these, all these limitations, we started to develop a system using a robot. And the, the robot is named as Keybot. Okay, uh, Keybot is based on a collaborative robot. Robots are finding applications in industry for many years, but collaborative robots are designed to work together with humans. So they have sensors uh, to, to, to sense human and to work with them in the same environment. And we have some uh, really challenging problems. We have to capture hair at a very high resolution to calculate it, to, to calculate the distance, at the, the thickness, and to calculate the number of follicles and the number of hair in each follicle. So we have to use a very high resolution camera, so our camera captures 18 megapixel image. And we also need to know the um, 3D model of the hat. In order to capture it, we are using a time of flight camera to capture a 3D model of the hat. And we also have some additional problems, such as limited uh, depth of field. When you try to capture close-up photos, you have very limited depth of field. And it takes things very, it makes things very hard. We have to be, um, at a fixed distance to the hat, so road planning is important. So we have a special road planning algorithm running at the background. And we also have some problems originating from the perspective. If you take images um, in, in, in close, they will look bigger. If you take these images from the further, it will be smaller. So you have to, uh, you have to eliminate this perspective error. In order to eliminate it, we are using a special lens system, which is called B-telecentric lenses. And after taking these images, uh, we roughly taken more than 125 images, and each at that resolution, which makes 1.2 gigapixel image. So it's a very huge image, and we have to uh, calculate, we have to detect all uh, the hair follicles, all the hairs, and the calculate the thickness of hair. And for this purpose, we are using artificial intelligence, a new technology used in uh, autonomous cars. I'll describe the details. Okay, here are the pictures we have. Um, 
uh, our sensor takes images at that resolution, and our physical resolution is five micrometers. So each pixel in our image is five, five micron resolution, and we have more than 120 five images, and in total we have two gigapixel image, which is quite huge. And here's the some uh, results. Um, I think you all have uh, this panoramic image uh, feature in your cell phones. So you take in images and moving the cameras, and then the software at the background stitch these images. So we are using the same technology. We are taking images from each location, um, the 2.5 centimeter to 2 centimeter, and then we stitch these images to create this gigantic 2 gigapixel image. Um, then we have to um, calculate the hair thickness. This is quite important because when you use calibers, you are making errors. So in order to evaluate the amount of error, we actually take samples and put them into the scanning electron microscope, which is the, the, the most correct or the best known technique to measure the thickness. So from that example, as you see, the thickness of this specific area is around uh, 79 micron, but the, caliber, the first caliber says it is 50 micron, the second caliber says it is 54, 54 micron, and our optical system says it is 75 micron, which is quite close to the original measurements. Another example, um, in that case we have um, uh, here with a diameter of 85 micron, the caliber one and caliber two says it's around 70 micron, which is again has some very big errors. And our system says it's around 80 micron. So when we evaluate all those things in 20 different patients, we have this graph. The horizontal axis shows the uh, number of people, the vertical axis show the hair thickness. So, as you see, the calibers, both calibers, provide constantly uh, smaller shot diameters. And the SEM is the grand truth, and the R system is this, so we are quite close to the original measurement. So the optical systems actually given better accuracy compared to the mechanical caliber meters. And our system can also uh, measure the area. Actually, when you try to measure area from the images, it is a little bit hard if you have a surface. If you, take, if you have a planar surface, it is easy, but HAT has not a planar surface, so we have a curve. So we have to calculate the geodesic distance to measure the correct area. So what we did using this 3D uh, data, we are actually me measured the geodesic distance to take the shape of the hat into account. And these are some results. And finally, the software sites uh, that detect and count the hairs, we are using these uh, deep learning approaches, which is quite popular in our area. And um, it's a quite promising approach. You give some samples to train the algorithm, after some training, using maybe 100,000 images, maybe million images, they can, they, uh, these kind of algorithms gives you the uh, correct results. They work on in GPU's graphical processing. Rate. And here are some real life examples uh, of these deep learning approaches. The autonomous cars actually use deep learning approaches. They are taking images, they are learning day by day, and they are improving their performance. And we have some recent applications in the medical field. For example, uh, this, in, this BBC News says artific artificial intelligence as good as cancer doctors. So they can detect the cancer as good as the special doctors, the doctors that have specialty on it. Another one, uh, this uh, algorithm developed by the team in Stanford can detect uh, phenomena better than radiologists. So there's an ongoing debate among radiologists if they will find a job in the near future. Okay? And here's the trend. Um, uh, this is an image recognition um, task, uh, and the people has around 0.5% uh, 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 accuracy, or error rate, let's say. And the algorithms are developing day by day, and Starting from 2016, algorithms are performing better than humans. So this is the time to use algorithms or artificial intelligence for the repetitive tasks. And these are our first experimental results. Uh, we take um, images from more than 100 persons, 
patients, and then we manually label all the uh, pairs, and then train our algorithms, train our deep network, and these are our first results. And these are calculated automatically by the algorithm without any human operator intervention. So these are the numbers. In that specific example, we have uh, a coverage value of 6.3, and it's a close-up image. So manual intervention is eliminated. All those things are calculated automatically. Another picture uh, from the donor area, as you see, we have blood spots. So we can also detect the blood spots. And here are the extraction regions. So having all those things, we can calculate the coverage value or whole hat, and we can create an image, a model like this. So you are, at past, uh, you can only calculate the coverage value for sample regions uh, from the sample areas. By this new robotic technology, the coverage value can be calculated for whole heads. This is very important to evaluate uh, the, uh, the, the, the operation. Um, the, my, here's my conclusions. Um, um, the keyboard, the robot we developed with Cry, is able to capture whole heads uh, using a high resolution camera and time of flight sensor. Uh, we have a custom deep learning uh, based approach, artificial intelligence approach, and we are training the algorithm every day. We are getting better results when we increase the number of samples. Um, uh, we are measuring the uh, hair shaft diameter in optical fashion, which, is, uh, which gives better results compared to the mechanical way. And we can also calculate the number of graphs that is extracted, which is quite important. And we are still working on the, uh, the, the, the planted area, how many hair is planted. By this way, we can easily calculate the transaction rate. So, this is it. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing tool, isn't it?